All right, good evening. Appreciate everyone that rode their boat into church tonight. A little bit wet out there. Kind of nice and cool on the inside. How many of you are too cool right now? Anybody? Too cool? Two of you. All right, because Buck got soaked on the way in. He saw him drench. Glad you were able to make it to church tonight. Those of you that tuned in on the internet, thank you for tuning in. We're going to stand here at Heritage Baptist Church, and Stephen's going to come and get us going. All right, good evening, church. If you would, turn your songbook to page 412. Page 412, we'll sing the first and the last verses of Stepping in Blood. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy, the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, we'll follow our guide. When we shall see him, the King in his beauty, happy, how happy, our place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light. Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Great singing, turn over to page 428. Page 428. Heavenly sunlight, we'll sing first and last of Heavenly Sunlight. Walking in sunlight all of my journey, over the mountains, through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake the promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight. Flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine on the last. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, praising his way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine, hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. Great singing church when you see. All right, just a couple of announcements here. Prayer requests. Uh, remind everyone, church Sunday morning live here at 11 o'clock. If you are in your place, invite someone. Let them know that we are open. I get that asked all the time. Are you guys open? So we've been open since Mother's Day. And, uh, you can tune us in on the internet and I as well. Um, but 11 o'clock Sunday morning, 6 o'clock Sunday night. Uh, a few prayer requests for those uh, that have been ailing physically. Uh, of course, pray for, continue to pray for Marita Dunlap and 
knee replacement surgery and she's recovering well. Uh, about a six week recovery period though. Uh, pray for Nancy Hoffman. She went to go get some tests today and I guess the machine broke down. So uh, she had some health difficulties. Pray, pray for Nancy. Uh, of course, for Naomi Rayborn and she has leukemia. So keep her in prayer. Well, it's our president, President Trump and all the leaders, all that's going on around the country. And uh, pray that maybe this will have a step for revival and uh, just pray for, pray for those requests. A host of others uh, we've been talking about, though. But right now, Stephen's going to read our scripture, and he's going to pray for us. All right. If you brought your Bibles, turn to Jude. Book of Jude. A couple short verses tonight. Jude 1 and 2. Give you a couple seconds. Book of Jude. We'll be reading verses 1 and 2 tonight. All right, if you're there, say amen. amen. Right. So Jude, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and Paul, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Let's pray. Dear Lord, just thank you for today, Lord. Thank you that uh, everyone that's here has been able to just wake up and, and come to church, Lord, in your in your free country, Lord. Um, pray that you just uh, would bless the service. Um, just be with everyone's hearts and minds, Lord. Just allow them to remain open, Lord. Just they might learn one thing, Lord, from tonight's service. Pray that you just be with the, the music and the preaching to come, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. We'll have our last uh, hymnal. Page 463, I'll let you remain seated. 463, we'll sing the first and the last of Bringing in the Shoes. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the new time and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Going forth with weeping, sowing for the master, though the law sustain, our spirit often breathes. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Great to sing tonight for the praise song, As the Deer. Maybe. We'll sing As the Deer, we'll sing it twice through it. As the deer panted for the water. So my soul long is after thee. You alone are my Lord's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit you alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's 
desire and I long to worship thee. And then you sing church. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Turn to the book of Jude again, please. The book of Jude. One chapter book. Book of Jude. Jesus Christ, he is the glory of God in the flesh. And he is truth. In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. And uh, there's an attack, you could say, on truth today. And uh, how many realize that everything you see on TV may not be the truth? Realize that? I was at the doctor's office on Monday, and uh, we're just talking small talk and the things that are kind of you know going on today. And the doctor says, you know what? I really don't know what to believe. You know, what you hear, is this true? Is that true? And we can always be rest assured there's truth in the King James Bible. And so I've, I've been wanting to teach the book of Revelation, and, uh, but I thought before you get there, you guys do the book of Jude. The 66th and final book, the book of Revelation here, that tells us how everything wraps up. And uh, once you get through the book of Revelation, then we get to eternity. Time ceases to exist. And uh, before you get there, though, we'll talk about the second coming and uh, after the rapture and the whole nine yards of Revelation here. We find the, the book of Jude, and uh, Jude says the truth is going to be assaulted in the last day. So I thought here I just want to jump in and look at this book, and just 25 verses, and uh, God put it there right where he wanted and it describes, again, the battles that we will face in the last days. We're going to turn to a few different verses tonight, not just all the verses here in Jude, but we're going to bounce around several places. By the way, because the truth is assaulted today, it's good to know what the Bible says. It's good to know what we believe and why we believe it. Not a serious um, series I preached years ago when someone had uh, messaged me a couple weeks back and, and uh, they were a ways away from here and they said, you know, Pastor, do you have that series still on CD? And I said, we don't have it on CD because it's been about 15 years ago or so since uh, we had it. We got everything's updated and the whole nine yards. That series is no longer. And I, she says, do you have it in written form? I says, I do have it in written form. But the problem is I am the only one that could read that written form right there. So it kind of has to do with the truth and, and knowing what we believe and why we believe it. And I kind of said that to say I encourage us to bring our Bibles. Not just bring our Bibles to church, but when you go home, read your Bible and know what you believe. And I'm going to give us all a homework assignment every day for the next week till next Wednesday night. For those in here, those that are listening on the Internet, I want us to read the entire book of Jude. Not the Bible, not the New Testament, just one book. And how many verses is that, church? 25 verses. How many think you can handle that? Handle that? Take about three minutes, maybe. You concentrate a little bit extra. But Jesus says in the last days, you're going to be careful that there's going to be false prophets. And the false prophet, turn. First place we'll turn to, turn to the book of Matthew 24. Matthew 24, then we'll look at the book of Luke. And I'm not going to maybe ask you to turn to each place, but I'm going to turn to various spots tonight and read it. And uh, Matthew 24 and verse number 11. And while you're at it, keep your spot there. I'm going to go to Luke 18 and verse number 8 in a moment after we read Matthew chapter number, number 24. So you got Matthew 24. Again, the rapture has taken place here. And uh, we're on to heaven. Those of us that are saved, that is. And we have the tribulation time on earth. Some different descriptions were made here of what things would be like at the end times. And verse number 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. There's many false prophets, you know, 
you need to be thankful that we come to a King James Bible believing church. Because not every church on every corner in America is preaching the truth. In fact, are you give me an amen if you're at Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18 and verse 8. Stephen, since you read that for us, would you mind reading again for us? Luke 18 and verse number 8 tonight. Son of man come shall be on the God is saying when he comes back, is he going to find faith on the earth? Now God has told us again in Jude verse 3, we'll break that down, but that's the, that's the crux of the 25 verses that we are to earnestly contend for the faith, for the faith. And uh, God is saying, am I going to find faith on the earth when I come back? Now, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse number 3 talks about this faith that's going to be light when the Antichrist comes on the scene. It's going to be waning. 2 Timothy talks about people are going to want to come to church. And the type of church they want to go to, they're, they want to want itchy ears. Meaning they want to go to a church, they're going to come and they're just going to feel good. And they're not really going to want to kind of, the old singers, have their toes stepped on. They want to come and feel comfortable in their skin. And God says, that's not the faith that I'm looking for in the end times. So again, we're just going to kind of break this verse, these verses down a little bit. We're going to probably just look at the first, first couple questions. God says, well, I find faith on the earth. And God says, I want you to kind of be soldiers for for Christ in the last days. And there's a battle that's going on. Who realizes there's a war? There's a war going on. The last two Sunday mornings, we preached on we're at war in America. We're at war in the Middle East. And we're at war with this coronavirus, our president stated. And, and there were a, a civil unrest that's going on today, a war within our own country. But God is saying, Christian, you need to get in the battle. If I were to ask you this question now, who would be one of the representatives of Christianity? Who would you who would come to your mind? And some of you would probably think of someone that would come on the radio or on the television. You may think of Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn would be if you, not necessarily you, but across the country. If you would take a poll and you'd have Rick take a microphone. And say Fox News on that thing, and you'd ask the polls, who would you say, what individual would represent Christianity today? Who would you say? Who would come to mind? Sheila. Joel Osteen. Thank you, Rick. Right, that microphone went well. Joel Osteen. Yeah. Now, I know that's not who Sheila would be saying would be, but she gave a correct answer. That would be one of the ones at the top, if not maybe the top of the list. You that who represents Christianity? We're talking about the battle for truth, the battle for faith, and God says it's going to leave us in the last days. The truth we're going to have defectors of the faith in the last, and He would be one of them. So how could you? Say such a thing if someone visited our uh, site tonight and just heard me say that. Sheila, by, by Rick giving the microphone, and she gave me the answer, the representative of Christianity is Joel Osteen. And I said, Joel Osteen was a defector of the faith. Someone may have a step back and say, how dare that pastor say such a thing since he's the representation of Christianity. But God says, mark those which cause division among you. And when someone like Joel Osteen can have a, a real microphone plugged up to him and ask a question by Larry King, said, you're telling me those that don't receive Christ as your Savior he was referring to the Muslims that flew those planes into the Twin Towers back almost 20 years ago. 
Larry King says, you're telling me, Joel? Larry said, those that don't accept Christ as their Savior will die and go to hell. Are you saying that? And Joel Osteen said, Larry, well, I'm not one to judge. As he was smiling from ear to ear, Google that interview. Well, I'm here to say that's blasphemy right there. That's a defector, not a defender, a defector of the faith that God simply tells us here that that's what would happen in the last day. Joel Osteen's right there. Hey, someone else, tell me. Does someone else come to your mind of who would say, who would be a, a representative of Christianity if Rick came to you, like you did to Sheila, and stuck a microphone in your face? Who would you say? Joel Osteen would be one. Some may say Creflo Dollar would be another one. The one that has a $14 million jet in his church gave to him since he preaches that great prosperity gospel. A $14 million jet. I don't ask for a $14 bonus. And old Creflo got a $14 million jet. Yeah, you got Creflo Dollar, representation of Christianity. You have Joel Osteen, you have T.D. Jakes, and you got Benny Hand, and you got the great Joyce Meyer that represents Christianity. He said, really? Yeah. A couple of years back, I was at my one of my favorite sites to eat at, the Hong Kong Buffet. And the gentleman that took the money asked me a question. I gave him a gospel track. He asked me a question about Christianity. He tells me, yeah, I've been studying this Christianity. And he says, you know, I've been, I said, what have you been studying? I said his name, I was Chinese name, but I forget what it was. I said, what have you been studying? He said, well, I've been watching every night Joyce Meyer. I said, are you serious? And I went into you know, an exhortation of that. You know, I was able then to just to use that as a little plug to get the gospel. As the God says again, we're supposed to be defenders of the faith. And these 25 verses here that God comes and gives to us says that apostasy is going to reign in the last days. And what you must do must earnestly. What does earnestly mean? That means with zeal. That means with fervor. That means with some energy. How many of you long to have energy today? Yeah. Yeah. You don't, I mean, when you have energy like you did when you're about six years old, you can run for like hours like the Energizer Bunny. And man, today you run 100 yards and you're about winded at the max. You golfers out there, man, how many of you golf just you got to walk it? You gotta walk it. No, you gotta take that cart. Oh no, yeah. The energy you gotta conserve. You gotta conserve the energy so you can swing that golf club a little bit better and, and the whole nine yards. But God says with earnest, with energy, with zeal, God says we're supposed to contend for the faith. So I've turned that if you were to first Corinthians fifteen and then second Thessalonians two. Turn to first Corinthians fifteen if you're listening over the internet. 1 Corinthians 15 tonight. Put your finger there. And then turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. And then 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. Stephen, you mind reading that verse 4, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10? In the evilness of unrighteousness, men that perish, because they receive not the love of truth, that they might be saved. Right, they receive not the truth. The truth. Now there's some of you, how many of you, your, your whole life that you've went to church? Some of you in here, that is the case. You've, you've always went, to the, a lot of you went to church your whole life. How many of you always went to an independent, you went to, always went to a Baptist church of some sort? Oh, oh, several of you 
always went to a, a Baptist church, a Bible believing preaching church. How many of you that hasn't always been the case? You can always went to a Bible believing church, okay? Like me. And I would be in that category here of Second Thessalonians 2 10. For I wasn't always given the truth. I wasn't always given the truth, man. I was in I was in search mode at a time in my life. At a time in my life when I felt like the world was caving in on me. There's a time in my life when I mean you would think looking on the outside, just looking at me, thinking, you know, why would I have trouble going on in my life? I came from a good moral family. Um, that's good friends. Had a good girlfriend, you could say at that time. Um Getting a good college, making pretty good grades, got a good future. But on the inside, man, I was like tore up. And I was in search mode. And I, God was working on my heart. And the church I was going to for most of my life was not giving me the truth that God said that would be waning in the last days. And I was in search mode, and I thank God for 1 Corinthians 15. And turn back there again, 1 Corinthians 15. That was given to me. Stephen, read verse number one for us, if you would, 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. Stand. Standing on the gospel. What is the gospel? How many of you know it's a pastor? If I to ask you, and I won't make you say it tonight, say, can you tell me in about five seconds what the gospel is? Raise your hand. How many say, yeah, I can tell you in five seconds what the gospel is? Okay, some of you. All right. Good. But you know, I won't make you say it tonight, but 1 Corinthians 15 tells us what it is. We're saved by the gospel. Stephen, read verse 2 for us. 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, Paul says now in the last days, faith is going to wane. Jude says in the last days, faith is going to wane. Paul tells us here in 1 Corinthians 15, you're supposed to stand by the gospel. Most of you can tell me what the gospel is. Verse 2 says, we're saved by the gospel. All right? Unless you've believed in vain. How would you believe in vain? Well, believe it in the truth. We believe in what verses 3 and 4 says. See, we finish up those two verses, please. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. All right, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel. Real quick. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. How many say, Pastor, man, I remember the day of my life I put my faith in that, in the gospel. All right? You got saved. But there's some people that believe, and verse 2 says they believed in vain. In vain. What does that, what does the word vain mean? Vain? It doesn't mean the vain. How many got some veins in your, in your arms? You got some veins? How many have ever went to the doctor, the nurse tried to draw some blood from you, she couldn't find that vein? All right, it happened to some of you before? Yeah, it stinks. Yeah, I couldn't find that vein. That's not what that vein means, though. I've never heard of a weather vein before. Weather vein? One was needed tonight, predicting the gold thunderstorm that moved through here. But of course, that's not the vein. Not, the vein here means of none effect. Some people believe. And they think they are believing correctly. Like, you know, me growing up, I believed in God. But what I believed was in vain as far as being saved, verse 2 says. I never saw a Mormon dressed up in dark pants, white shirt, riding a 10 speed bicycle in your neighborhood before. You seen that? You know, they believe, they believe in God. They don't believe in the God of the Bible like we know the God of the Bible. They believe they're writing their ten speed, talking to people, a false salvation or giving them thinking they're doing good. That's getting them to heaven. 
They believed, but they believed in vain. And I could go through denomination after denomination after denomination of people that are sincere, sincerely good people at that, but they're believing in vain. Some believe that they're going to go to heaven by believing there's a God. Just believing in God doesn't get anybody to heaven. James 2, verse 19 says, the devils believe and tremble. Some people believe that helping grandmas across the street, being doing kind acts like that's going to get them. Of course, that's believing in vain. The only one that gets, gets you to heaven is by believing the gospel, verses 3 and 4, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that, church, is what's most at stake in these last days that Jude tells us. Tonight, just by means of introduction, we're going to go over just a, a couple of verses, if we could. Um, probably just read the first couple of verses, but if you would, again, God put Jude right where he wanted it. Four of the last five books of the Bible written by the Apostle John. He wrote 1 John, 2 John, and who wrote 3 John? John did. Right. And who wrote Revelation? John did. And right in the middle of that is the book of Jude. But just before John's, John's books is the book of First and Second Peter. In fact, turn there if you would. Uh, Second Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1. In my Bible, next page over, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 3. And get this. Jude is like a sequel to 2 Peter. It's good to know your Bible, church. It's good to know that all of you are going to read 25 verses every day for the next week. And when you read those 25 verses, you're reading something of the book of Jude, it's like a sequel to 2 Peter. And 2 Peter describes what will be like in the, before the Lord comes back. Stephen's going to read 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1 for us. Go ahead, Stephen. There were false prophets also among the people, and that there have been false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Chapter 3, verse 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Damnable heresies, the Bible talks about. What's a heresy, church, that you've heard that's sweeping across the country today? What's a, a heresy that you've heard sweep across our country? Stephen, what's a heresy you've heard sweeping across our country? What would it be, a heresy? Sharp? Yes, Gene. Salvation by immersion. All right, very good. Some people believe that if you get water sprinkled on your forehead or poured, that that's going to get you to heaven. No, only by immersion should one be baptized. By the way, church, being immersed, does that get somebody to heaven by that and that alone? No. You only get immersed after receiving Christ as your Savior. And that's what I was taught. I was taught a heresy for 23 years. That if I got baptized, that's how I would go to heaven. That's a heresy. That is what would be prevalent, you could say, in the last days. Now, when Jude wrote this, Catholicism didn't exist. You know, liberalism and cults weren't existing then, if you would. But Jude now does not get specific, if you would. But back to the book of Jude. He doesn't get specifics on teachings, per se, if you would. But he talks about some lifestyles, you would, that would go on. In fact, Stephen, read verse number four for us, if you would. Condemnation, ungodly men, burning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I won't turn to Romans one, but 
The Bible talks about damnable heresies. Jude says, all right, so here's what some things will be like in the last days. And he gives a specific example. Stephen, go ahead and read verse 7 for us. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal, eternal fire. All right, very good. We know Sodom and Gomorrah homosexuality was prevalent then. And we see that here in the last days as much as anything. And the God calls that like an abomination. Um, on and sat on this past Saturday evening, Cyrus was a protest that were, was going on. And Brock comes with me and shows me a picture. It's like a parade through Cyrus where I grew up. There was a, he showed me a picture. There was a guy, you could call him that. A guy that I mentioned in the past before. That I was, there was a time I was in the same Sunday school class as him. A guy that graduated from Bucyrus. I went to Winford. He graduated from Bucyrus, class 89. He went off to Bible college. This guy became a pastor. And the picture he showed me at that protest, he wasn't a man. He was dressed up as a woman. And that man, get this though, he's dressed as a woman, always is, and he preaches. Still today, that's what you call a defector of the faith. That's what you call a damnable heresy, which is why we are to be soldiers, God says. We're to honestly contend for the faith. We're to stand stand our ground. We're going to go through here. Jump on down. I'm going to break verse number one and two down, and we're going to be done here. I want us to know our Bibles and... First word in the book of Jude is what, church? Jude. Jude. The Greek word for Jude is Judas. And Judas means you could say an apostate. And there's one book in the whole Bible that speaks entirely on apostasy, and that's just 25 verses of the book of Jude. And of this book, the 25 verses... What's kind of neat is God names it after the great apostate of all apostates, Judas. That's the Greek word Jude for is, is Judas. So Jude goes on. Who is Jude? He's the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. I, I'm like Jude. I said this last Sunday. I'm thankful that I am a servant of Jesus Christ. My servant, and Jude says that he is too. The, we won't break these verses down, but who, who is James? The Bible says James is the brother was was the brother of Jesus. James was the brother of Jesus. So, what does that make Jude? The brother, yes, the brother of Jesus. By the way, James or and Jude, none of them got saved. When their brother was on this earth. And if you say, how could that be? Imagine Jesus being your brother. All right, literally your blood brother. And I know he's our brother, or brothers in Christ. Your blood brother, imagine that. You're out there playing kickball in the backyard. Imagine that. I'm sure the Potter brothers did that a time or two before. The Mills brothers, I'm sure, did you with your brother playing kickball in the backyard? And your brother says, Stop it right now. That ball was foul. I know it was. He says, Who says that you're right? Are you God? And Jesus says, As a matter of fact, yes, I am. And uh, Jude and James, yeah, right. Yeah, you are. They, that's what they never believed Jesus was was God when He was on this earth, but later on they believed they got saved, and of course we have this book of Jude here that Jude wrote. So Jude here, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. 
sanctified. Are you glad being saved has nothing to do with anything that you've done or do? How many are thankful that Jesus promised us he'll never leave us nor forsake us? No matter what we do or don't do, we're going to go to heaven since we got saved. You know, how many say, Pastor, man, I've messed up since I got saved before, besides me? Yeah, almost everybody admits that. Me and Brock, he still remembers. He's, uh, he, was, he was a tiny little guy. He might have been three or four, but he says, talked about that. He remembers that. Going to a housing guy, knocking on the door. A guy tells me and him when we were witnessing that he got saved like 35 years ago at this church. And he said, you know what? I have not sinned one time since then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I told him. Yeah. God says you saved, you have no sin to deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. No, I'm thankful that when we mess up, it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. And God sanctifies us right here. He, he preserves us. And uh, the last word here is in called, verse 2, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. And that verse, or excuse me, that word at the end of verse number 1, what, what does that say, church? What does that say? Call. The, the, the last word. First word, Jude. Last word is what? Called. Called of God. I'm going to stop on that. On, on that. But called, called, called of God. Called into the battle. Um, I'm going to ask you to turn to, excuse me, turn to Romans. This will be my last point tonight. Romans chapter number eight. Last point of being called. How do you remember the day and time, the moment that you got saved? Let me see your hands. The moment you got saved. Those that are listening, I hope your hand is up. Not let tonight be the night of your salvation. The time you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I mentioned this Sunday, Sunday evening. Now, some people just don't get it. God called me. God chose me. I don't know why. I don't deserve it. But Romans chapter number 8 of well, a familiar verse is verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Called. Called of God for His purpose. Stephen, read verse 29 for us. For whom He did foreknow, He also did destinate to be conformed to the image of the Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. All right. Predestinated. God chose us. God called us. You know, there are people under the sound of my voice, maybe often, I don't, I don't know, but I believe there's probably some on the sound of my voice, they hear what you've heard. Some have heard for year after year. They've heard the gospel that we talked about a little bit ago. They've heard that Jesus Christ loves you, died for you. If you will call upon Him, Romans 10, 13, you shall be saved. The Holy Spirit of God has tried to convict their heart. But some people just don't get it. There's some of you here tonight. Some of you might even listening. Man, you're on the edge of your seat. Look at Stephen Wright. You're just like him. On the edge of your seat. Man, eyes on me. You're hanging on every word. You're wanting the Lord and you're wanting to grow. So you've been in church for years. You're hanging on every word, wanting to grow. And you've been saved. And you got it one day. There's others. They hear time after time after time after time after time after time after time. And pretty soon, in their mind and heart, it's like same old, same old. I heard it before, I'm going to hear it again. This may be the last time you are ever going to hear it. As Jesus may come tonight. And some just don't get it. And others do. How do some get it? Some don't. God calls. God predestinates. 
everybody that's saved. Who does God predestinate? We don't know. We're not God. Our thoughts are on God's thoughts. His thoughts are on our thoughts. Why did God choose me? I don't know. I did not grow up again in a family that were Christians, that were saved. I didn't. I didn't. But he grew up in a family of some preachers in the family, some many Christians. Rick grew up in a Christian home. He got saved a little later on. My kids, all six, grew up in a Christian home. They know nothing about being in a King James Bible preaching church. I know Stephen has grown up in a Christian Bible believing home his whole life. Me, I didn't. And I know how. Some of you to raise your hands. You're with maybe with me a little bit. Not everybody's testimony is the same, but similar. Why did God? I don't know of one person in my family, in the Nobla family, that was saved. Saved. I don't know one. I don't know on my mom's side. I didn't know personally of anyone at that time of an aunt, an uncle, or a cousin that were saved. No grandparents left. I didn't know, didn't know one. I was the first. A first in the whole family to be saved. Well, how does that happen? I don't know, but I'm thankful that God, G verse 1, called me. God called me. And my heart was soft enough. I accepted Him. I accepted Him. Aren't you thankful tonight for those of you that are saved that God chose you? Out of almost 8 billion people in this world now, God reached down from heaven and he chose you individually to be in his family. We serve a great, great God. Amen? And in the meantime, until he comes and gets us to take us to be with him, we are to earnestly contend for the faith and be soldiers in this battle. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you. We thank you for this book of Jude, these 25 verses that God tells us to contend for the faith with. I thank you, dear God, that you called us to the battle. Thank you for bringing us into your family, those of us that are born again and have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray, dear God, in heaven, us at Heritage Baptist Church will glorify you with our lives until you come and get us to take us to be with you. Lord, bless again each one here tonight, those that are listening. May we be about your work until you too come and get us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. All right.